Okay, today's going to be a fun video because um, if anybody actually follows my videos, you'll know that I'm a Linux user and I do computer programming for fun when I have time, which is almost never. Between working at Walmart and doing online school, I rarely get a chance to do my programming. But um, I'm going to show you how I'm going to get started. At least I think I'm going to because I usually do my programming on Linux. That's what I've done for the past three years, basically. I do all my programming on Linux, but then I have a development environment on Windows that I use to compile the Windows versions. But right now I'm actually using my new Lenovo laptop that has Windows 11. And I bought this because I needed a new laptop for school because the old one was not working and then the MacBook I had, I fried it by spilling Gatorade on it. So that's a crazy situation. But enough about that. I'm going to try to set up a development environment that can compile my Tetris game, Chasetris, on Windows 11. Now, as somebody who's been a Linux user and occasionally use Windows 10 to play Minecraft or for certain school-related things, Windows 11 is weird to me. Yeah, it's Windows, but the layout's different. And when I first got started using um, uh, Windows 11, everything was just a little bit weird. And I tried to install a program. I tried to install Belina Etcher. I tried to install OBS, um, but I found out that Windows um, 11, it won't let you just install programs because it's an S mode. Like, oh, you can only install things that Microsoft approve of, approves of, but it had an option to turn it off so you can ins download and install things from other places on the internet. So of course I did that because the whole idea is to customize it for my own needs not just do whatever's in the Microsoft store. I'm not actually a fan of Windows. I'm not a fan of Microsoft. I've made that clear for a long time. But nonetheless, this computer has Windows 11 and the hardware is great. It has a built-in camera and right now as I'm recording, it's using about 6.1% of the CPU power uh, while it's recording the the micro, built in microphone, built in camera, so you see me right now. Okay, and now I'm getting a pop up Lenovo Vantage Smart Performance for your PC. I'm going to dismiss that. Okay, the first things first, one thing I hate about Windows is the constant pop ups, all these apps, things popping up. I hate it. I don't have to deal with any of that on Linux. But any programmer needs to be able to compile their programs for Windows. So, what I'm going to try to do, I'm going to attempt to set up a development environment to compile from my source code um, my Tetris game so I can play it on this computer. And I've already published the Windows version available. It's on itch.io and on my Patreon and everything. And the source code is all on GitHub, but I have my own personal backups because what happened is when my, comp my former computer failed to boot, I had to use a Debian live system and so I could go um, zip up my my personal files off the hard drive and then upload it to my online accounts and everything. So I have my backups. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off my camera and then I'm going to switch to display capture. And now you can see these pop-ups. How do I stop? Okay, yes, turn off all notifications. I hate notifications. I hate them on my phone. I hate them on everything. So anyway, here's OBS Studio, the program I'm using to record. And so you can see as I speak, the microphone bar goes up. So I hope the quality is good. I hope it's good. I don't know for a fact. Okay. So what I'm going to I'm going to show you my whole desktop here. And let me make sure yes, I am recording and it's not using very much CPU power. And we're going at 60 frames per second. This computer is really good quality, and I carefully chose it too. Anyway, but I'm going to go. So I have my files that I backed up. Let's see here. Let's go to my documents. So, okay, here's my big USB backup. Now, wait a minute. Okay, yeah, that, that's not right. Okay, so the layout here is different. Okay. First of all, yeah, those, see, these are my personal files. 
okay, now that looks right. And then I have my full cell university files um, there. Because I, I had a whole bunch of files on my other computer. I only backed up the most essential things. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go to home. And I'm going to go, okay, where are my backups? Okay, yeah, this, it, it's, I have a hard time figuring out this, okay, but see users, and okay, here's the backups folder. This is 10.24.2023 because that was when it failed to boot into Ubuntu and then I could boot into Windows, but I, had, I couldn't read my Linux partition without booting from a live USB. Technical details. So, but here is a 7-zip archive. And okay, it's a 7-zip archive, okay? Normally the program 7-zip uh, does this, but what I, but as it turns out, Windows 11 actually can, by default, extract 7-zip files. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm going to extract all of my programming files. This is an improvement in Windows 11, the fact that it has native support for 7-zip files. So yeah, here, it's kind of weird how this is. So I'm going to, I'm going to, okay, actually, let me see. Yeah, every, everything is there. Everything is there. So we're going to, I'm going to copy everything in here. Then we're going to go back to my documents and we're just going to paste all those files. Okay. It's going to take just a few seconds to paste those files. I just put everything in my documents on Windows just like I did on Linux. It works. And I didn't even copy over my music. No, most of my music is purchased on iTunes. and I already have that downloaded. I installed iTunes. So now what I can do is I can close. I can delete this. It's weird. The menus look different. It it kind of confuses me just a little bit. Okay. Oh, yeah, because I copied it. I didn't cut it. Okay. So here we're in my documents. And let's look. My source code. See, nothing has changed for some time. So if we go to um, SDL Chase Tris 2, You'll see this was all my files copied straight over from Linux. Now, so all the source code is here. But because this is Windows, it doesn't really work the same way as it did on Linux, obviously. So, for example, one thing that Windows has, it has an open in terminal option. And this is like Linux in a way, but it's different. See, because LS doesn't do anything, because LS is not the command for listing a directory. On Windows, it's dir. Okay, so it shows the files. Main doesn't do anything, but, and in cat, yeah, cat doesn't do it. Let's, 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 let's do, we have to do type make file. So here's the, the Linux make file, and it's not going to work for several reasons. First of all, Windows is different. Second of all, I don't have GCC. GCC is not a command, it's not installed. And it's very interesting because see, okay, yeah. So I'm gonna show you what, see this is the command prompt, but then you also have the option to open up a Windows PowerShell, which is a whole different kind of shell. And ls does work, but but cat doesn't. Yeah, that that's weird. Yeah, let's see here. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to use PowerShell very well. But there are a variety of package managers that are supposed to allow you to um, install things similar to Linux. It's very weird, but here's okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to open my web browser, and I'm going to do search for scoop windows, and we're going to go to scoop.sh. 
So, hmm, a command scoop, a command line installer for Windows. And it explains some things about what scoop does. And supposedly it it works sort it like if you're used to Debian or Ubuntu and you've tried to install software from the command line where you have like, you know, apt install whatever or or apt search or whatever, stuff like that. Scoop is meant to be a package manager that works under Windows to be similar to the way that um, Linux can install things. Because I like installing things to the command line. Let's do a search for SDL. Okay. Oh, okay. SDL image, SDL, SDL2 mixer. So it looks like... It looks like SDL is part of the, um, yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Okay, scoop bucket add extras. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know much about this. I really don't because I've never used Scoop before. So this video will be a learning experience for me as well as for anybody else. So quick start, open a PowerShell terminal version 5.1 or later and run. Set execution policy, remote signed scope, current user, optional needed to run a remote script for the first time. And then this, okay. So I'm just gonna do, I think I'm just gonna go with this. Let me read this for a second. Okay. Okay, eliminate the permission pop-up windows, hides GUI wizard style installers, prevents path pollution from installing lots of programs, avoids unexpected side effects from installing and uninstalling programs, finds and installs dependencies automatically, performs all the extra steps itself to get a working program. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm going to, first I'm going to copy this command. I'm going to open up a command prompt and just for fun, let's try running this in a in the command prompt. See, it doesn't work in a command prompt. It needs an actual PowerShell. So we're going to open a Windows PowerShell instance and close the regular traditional command prompt. And now I'm going to run this command. Hey, that's cool. It doesn't show that it did anything. But it did it, okay. And then we're going to run this command and it's going to, okay, let's try running this command. Let's see if it doesn't. Initializing, downloading, <coughs> extracting. So it's doing something. I don't know what it's doing, and I hope that people will be able to see it. Creating shim. Okay. Oh, and then for oh for some odd reason, then it it showed this. Yeah, it sh it, it opened up this explorer window. Okay, scoop was insta installed successfully. You mean that's all I had to do to install scoop? Okay, it says type scoop help for instructions. Scoop. Help. Okay. Oh, cool. Let me let me try to full screen this. Okay, so that is so cool. I just had to run those two commands and I've installed scoop. Okay, available commands are listed below. Type scoop help command to get more help for a specific command. Okay, so Okay, let's do scoop help search. Okay, search for apps that are available to install. If used without query, shows app names that match the query. That query shows all the available apps. Okay, let's just do scoop search. Let's try that. Let's see what if it does anything or not. Let's see it. So far, it's not doing anything. 
it may take a while. It may be trying to search. Yeah. Oh, oh, would you look at that? It's showing me everything. It's showing the list of every single possible package. Wait, it has TCC. Let's see, it has a lot, a lot of cool things. Rust. Oh man, it has it. It has everything. Okay, but let's let's know there's a okay, let me let me try clear. Okay. Interesting. CLS, but also cl clear also works. Okay, that's cool. Let's do let's okay, GCC is not it doesn't exist, but let's do scoop search GCC. Okay, let's see if Scoop can search for a package named GCC, which is the new compiler collection or the new C compiler. Oh, okay, fun. So there is GCC. Now let me do Scoop Info GCC. Let's try this. GCC, new compiler collection and bin utils. Ooh, nice. That's nice. Environment, C plus and group as. Okay. Look, I'm gonna do scoop install DCC. Let's see if it'll work. Installing, oh, okay. It's installing 7-zip. Then it's install, oh, okay. 7-zip was installing. Oh, okay. So it's installing 7-zip. And then it's installing, it maybe uses 7-zip to extract something. Oh, that's cool. Scoop is actually pretty cool. And I've, like, I only read a little bit about Scoop. And I also looked at Chocolatey, MSYS2, Winget. There's various installers, but I'm trying to turn Windows into a development environment, but not what, not what a Windows user thinks a, a development environment is. I'm not looking for a graphical IDE. I hate Visual Studio. I use a text editor and kind of command line. That's what I do. Okay. See, the idea is to be able to easily compile my programs on Windows the same way that I do as I was running Linux, for instance. So let's try GCC. Yes, <clears throat> fatal error, no input files. Let's see, so at least it, it recognizes that as a command. Make, okay, let's do scoop search make. Let's try scoop search make. Because I know enough about Linux commands that I usually use to be able to sort of recognize things. And Scoop isn't that different than apt. Okay, so make. Okay, let's first of all let me do scoop help. Okay, so interesting. Okay, so let's do scoop list and list what we have installed. We have 7-zip and GCC, but let's do scoop info make. Yeah, make, build automation tool. Okay, so let's do scoop install make. Let's try this. Okay, when I do make, Okay, it says no target specified and no make file found. Stop. Interesting. Okay, let's try something. So now, I'm going to try something. Now, I'm going to do, um, okay, let's, let's try make and DCC. Now, I'm in a regular command prompt, but it still works. Let's do scoop. Oh, okay, Scoop apparently still works. Okay, that's pretty cool. That's actually really cool. So let's see now. Um, let me, okay, I'm gonna minimize this. Go back to my desktop. 
Now let's try something. Let's try um, going back to my programming files. Let's go back, wait, to the, because this is all under MSYS2 because originally all my programming was done on MSYS2. I have an old Tetris thing that I never finished because I then converted over to Chasetris. So let's go to Chasetris2 here. Let's remove this executable because that's a Linux executable, won't run on Windows. And let's try, um, let's try open in terminal. Let's try make. Unrecognized command line option C flags. Yeah, see, that's not going to work. That's not going to work at all. Um, it's kind of tricky because this whole thing is configured to run on on Linux. It's not configured. Wait, bash. And see, it's very strange because I don't exactly. I don't exactly have this set up in such a way. And let me look at my README file here. Yeah, this was my README file about how to play the game. And there are some files that I backed up on my GitHub. I'm gonna go back to my GitHub. Okay, github.com. Okay, oh, I need to sign into my GitHub account. Um, Let's see here, that's that's crazy. I don't necessarily want to. Well, what if I don't want to sign in? What if I just look for Chaste Tris? Okay, let's see here. Okay, I wanna I wanna be able to look, I don't want to sign in to GitHub right now. I just want to be able to look at my repositories because my repository, this has the original Raylib version, but then I have the SDL renderer version, which is the Chase Tris 2. So here's what I'm going to do. I want to be able to look at these files because see, I had a different development environment. So like if you look here, this is the make file and this is what I have. But then I had a um Yeah, I had I had different files here. See, I had this file cuz I used W64 dev kit as my development environment and I had I had a very specific system uh, where I had manually installed the right headers and stuff myself. And I had it I had it working. It was, it was so cool. So, but right now, let's go to the simple make file. So here, we know that we have to install certain things here. Okay, so let me try. Okay, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm going to attempt something. I want to have a very basic um, command here. Okay, I'm trying to I'm trying to select this. Okay, so we're going to I'm going to copy this command here. And I think um let's see how will I do this. Yeah, because I ha I have a lot of files. See, I want a place to I want, I want to be able to do this. Okay, so I'm just going to create a file in here, a text file, just a plain text file. Okay, scoop notes. Just scoop notes, that's what it's gonna be called because obviously not everything here is going to make sense. Right now I'm going to, um, and I know none of what I'm doing right now makes sense. It makes sense to me. There's a lot of information in my head that isn't going to make sense. But I'm going to try something. I'm going to remove those parts. Okay. 
So now let me go back to, we're going to open a terminal here and we're going to try running this command. SDL.h, see there is no file with that, with that name. Also, let me try going back to this. Let's try running this full command. Now it's not going to work. I know that already because, you know, the paths are part of the script. Yeah, so see that doesn't work. So we need to install SDL. So let me try scoop search SDL. Let's, I'm just going to try it. Now we're running from a regular command prompt, so we'll see if it works or not. I have no idea if it's going to work. Okay. So it works. Let's do scoop install SDL2. Oh, couldn't find manifest for for SDL2. That's strange. Oh, okay. Result oh results from other known buckets. Okay, scoop bucket add. Okay, I think I know what I'm supposed to do. Okay, I, I'm i going to go back. Let's search for the SDL here. Okay, so scoop bucket, add extras. So we have to add the extras bucket. I don't know what a bucket is, but we're going to try this. Scoop bucket, add extras. Git is required for, okay. Git is required for buckets. Run scoop install git. Okay, scoop install git. We're installing git. We're gonna get git. <laughs> this is actually pretty cool. I have a package manager that's running inside Windows that it's called scoop instead of app, but it's similar. So now I'm installing git. And it's it's extracting all of the required things. It's just going to take a while to install these things, but if I get a if I get a working development environment, that will that will be good. Okay, why did it go back? Why did it go back to? Okay. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what that means. We're going to scoop bucket add extras. Checking repo. It's going to take a while. It just takes time to set up some things, but I only have to do this once, but I wanted to make sure I record a video of myself doing it, just so it can be clearly seen. Okay. The extras bucket was added successfully. Okay, that's what I want to see. Let's go scoop install SDL2. Let's try this. Installing SDL2 from extras bucket. Checking at hash of SDL2, devel. Okay. Yeah, this is actually pretty cool. Let's, I don't know if it's gonna work or not. <clears throat> okay. So SDL what was in, installed successfully. Okay, let's do let's do a clear. Okay. Oh yeah, it's CLS. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Let me go back to this. 
And let's try. See, I don't know if this is going to work or not. I really don't know. SDL, no such file or directory. Hmm. That's weird. No such file or directory. Um, wait. SDL to config. Okay, SDL to config is not recognized as an internal or external command. Okay, let's try let's try running a Windows PowerShell. SDL to config. Yeah, see it's interesting. Um Okay. Oh, how interesting. SDL to config. Yeah. For whatever odd reason, it's not showing as a valid command. So let's do scoop info SDL2. Okay, let's see here. It was installed somewhere, but where was it installed? Because we want to be able to compile these programs that use SDL. Okay, so. I'm going to have to do a little bit of digging here because, see, normally um, we're going to, okay, I'm going to open the make file. Okay, I want to, I want to open the make file with notepad. Okay, see, sdl2-config, normally this is a command. Normally that is totally a command but it's not showing up as a command on here. So let's see here, what's, go what's going on? Let's, what's going on here? So we know that um, things should be installed. Okay, here's the scoop directory. So scoop apps SDL2, ooh, current, ah. Oh, okay, that's cool. So that, that's actually pretty cool. It shows, here's where the header files are. The header files are actually here. Okay, the header files are in here. That's where, pack, okay, and then there, yeah, see right there are the, um, oh, they're lib files. Huh, that's a little bit strange. Hmm, they're lib files, so they're not exactly, they're not exactly the kind that are known to work with GCC. At least I don't think. That's weird, that's very weird. I'm not sure if this is gonna work. Hmm. So we see we have those there, but will they work? I'm not entirely sure. I may have wasted my time. Let's see, what's this? Package config. SDL2. Okay, I want to open this with Notepad. Let's just see here. Exec prefix. Um, hmm. So the include dear prefix include. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure here. I'm not sure if. Um, hmm. Yeah, I don't really know what I'm doing. I know I had a system that absolutely worked when it came to um, W64 dev kit, and I can still go that route. But I kind of want to figure out the scoop way to do things. There's got to be a way. Hmm.
Yeah. <laughs> well, I certainly have tried. Okay, let's... I certainly tried, but for whatever odd reason, it was not working like I expected it to. I think it installed the Visual C++ development files that work with Microsoft products rather than the ones that work with GCC. So I may have installed the wrong thing because what's in the repository may not have worked. So that's a little bit awkward. Maybe there's still a workaround. I just don't know what it is yet. So that's something to explore another day. But at least I got started. I found out I can install GCC, but how do I get how do I get things installed the way I need? I could always do a manual install by installing the development files exactly the way that I need it to be. It's worth a shot anyway. Uh, if I do figure it out, I'll make another video. Thanks for watching. I hope something was educational here, even though I'm fumbling around doing stuff that I don't know what I'm doing.